Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Ian with Out of This World Reader. And recently, I just realized that May is almost over. So that means I had to kind of get together my reading plans for the month of June. So this year has just been flying by, but this video will be my June reading TBR and I'm packing it full of more books because now I'm on summer break. So I just feel like any time, any free time that I have, while we spend reading and writing. So I think without further ado, let's hop in with all these picks that I've got planned for the month. So first up, I really want to get to Redone, which is the second novella within the Skyward Flight by Brandon Sanderson. These are all kind of little stories following different kind of characters within the Skyward um, series. And it's supposedly the first to follow the events of Star Sight, and you're supposed to read them between before Cytonic. And then the last one ever short afterwards but i just really love um just the skyward series in general i love spence as a character as well as kind of like the training with the pilots and just like the high stakes in the first book i felt like the second book kind of took a step down but still it improved just or kind of gave me more of what i was looking for in kind of the world building and getting to know more of just kind of like the situation that Humanity is kind of faced within this world how they've kind of been forced underground to fight for survival. I just really love it. And I'm really interested to see how these um, characters can add a new perspective to the story because in the kind of the series in general, you only get from Spence's perspective. So getting different perspectives in the Skyward Flight is really kind of exciting. And I'm just eager to see how they will kind of add new elements into the story. I haven't yet read Sunreach, but I'm planning on picking it up next after my current read. But I have a feeling that I will just continue to love all these as well. Then we have Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty, and I do not have a copy yet, but this is the third and final book within the David Bad trilogy. And this really has surprised me. I was kind of expecting to absolutely love this um, trilogy in general. I read The City of Brass last month, and I'm currently reading The Kingdom of Copper. But I felt like The City of the Brass was kind of just like a big setup book. I felt like it was just really kind of setting the stage for a lot to come. It was very slow going and you just really kind of sit with these characters as they're kind of discovering the City of Brass and David Bad and kind of going about these roles that they're in and learning how their position kind of affects them now as, as well as kind of the past. I thought the characters were all very interesting and just the city of David Bad was so interesting. I just really loved S.A. Chakraborty's kind of writing and how she described the city. That was one thing I loved. Like I really felt like I was walking in the streets in the Grand Bazaar and just the characters as well. Like even though it was really slow going, like you really get to connect with the characters and just sit with them. And I really enjoyed that as well. But I felt like there just wasn't much going on until like the last like 50 or 75 pages. That's when it like really kicked off and really caught my attention. And so far as I've kind of been making my way through The Kingdom of Copper, which is the second book, it's just been a blast so far. So I'm hoping that it continues to kind of stay on this route because The City of Brass kind of kicked off with a bang and then kind of leveled off until the end. So I'm hoping that the, the kind of Kingdom of Copper will just keep me intrigued throughout the whole book. From what I've heard though, I feel like a lot of people really enjoy the conclusion to the series, the series in general, and just their enjoyment of the series overall kind of improved with each book. So we'll see how kind of it'll all wrap up in the month of June. Then we get to jump back into some more sci-fi that I've, just, I've been just loving the series overall. Like I really enjoyed the first book, and then the second book I feel like took another step up and I actually enjoyed that book more than the first one. But this is the third book in the Expanse series by James S. A. Corey, which is Abaddon's Gate. But like I mentioned, like the first book go like caught my attention and it intrigued me to kind of pick up the next book. But then that second book, Caliban's War, was just I love just everything that that kind of improved on in the first book, like it added in more perspectives. And in the first book, like the stakes were really high, but I feel like in the second book, like it was also very high, like the elements of kind of a war between the different systems like on the brink never stopped 
there was also like a perspective of a father trying to find his daughter and it was just a race against time and just the other perspectives that we kind of got um like holden and his crew with the rocky and them kind of getting getting spending more time with them and the second book i just have been starting to fall in love with the series and then the way that the second book ended like it just ended on like this giant cliffhanger and i really wanted to kind of pick up the third book like just right after finishing it but i've been trying to kind of pace myself and just go about it slowly that way i can just really enjoy it the best i can and i feel like with each book it also kind of is unveiling kind of like this sinister um molecule that's kind of been hiding that you kind of got when the first book but it's kind of been just pushed to the background with the, like everything else kind of going on but slowly with like each book, especially in the second book, like it is starting to kind of make a more prevalent kind of um, appearances and kind of tells you what is to come in the future. So I'm very excited to kind of continue on with this and just see how, see how it kind of continues to improve. This next trilogy, I have been wanting to kind of pick up forever now because everyone just raves about it. He's one of their favorite authors in this series. is just a pinnacle in grimdark fantasy, and he just finished up like the second era of this world. And I will be picking up The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie, which is the first book in the First Law trilogy. I think the one thing that I hear the most is just um, Joe Abercrombie's kind of dialogue and his characters that he creates in here, like Logan Nine Fingers and um, clocked uh, like a torture and just everything about it. Like everyone just seems to love everything about this series. And I feel like the majority of people also say that it's kind of like this first book is slow and it's kind of just a big kind of getting to know the characters in the world. And you won't really understand what the plot is until the end of the book, but that's fine by me. As long as we can, as long as I can just get on board with everything going on. That won't be a problem for me and I'm just excited to see like if the hype is real and see if I really do enjoy just this series like everyone else is. I recently watched um, the kind of Mason's Rats which was on Love Death Robots and it was adapted by Joe Abercrombie and I, I really loved that. I think that's been probably my favorite kind of um, little episode within this new series, this new season. So if that is to say anything like I, I am hoping that I will kind of love his humor and just what he's got going on within the first lot trilogy. And if I do enjoy this first book, I really want to just continue through his books before his kind of new trilogy or series come, comes out. It's called like The Demons, which sounds even cooler than just The Blade itself. But I don't know, everyone seems to love this and I'm feeling I will as well. Another grim dark fantasy, which is actually a new release. I've been kind of picking up one or two every month that I'm gonna be picking up one this month and i think this isn't as grim dark as the blade itself but this one is the justice of kings by richard swan which i've been hearing quite a bit of good reviews and kind of um a lot of people have been picking it up and really enjoying it so far and that like when i first saw it, it was on my most anticipated releases because of like this justice who kind of has just a whole bunch of power and he's kind of like judge jury and executioner all in one and he kind of has like these mysterious powers and you're following kind of like his apprentice. And there's also like this element of kind of like a murder mystery that he's kind of trying to solve and you're just following kind of the apprentice's viewpoint as she is kind of learning from Bob and Vault as he kind of tries to figure out this murder and kind of starts to under uncover something else that's kind of going on between some rival powers and how there's kind of like this vie for the throne which will also kind of put him in danger and kind of out of a job. I know Patrick Leo really enjoyed this and I know the Brothers Grimm kind of enjoyed this as well. Ellie Brooks, like I feel like just a lot of people have been picking this up and really enjoying it. So I'm very excited to see how I will enjoy this or not and I will have the review for this out coming out soon. We've got two more fantasy books here and they're both YA. I've been kind of being picky with my YA, now that I'm reading mostly YA, but this one, I sadly didn't get to last month because I just picked up some other books on the whim, just out of nowhere. Like I just had like this, um, this reading mood that kind of came out of nowhere and I just had to pick up those other books. But I'm hoping to get to Sorcerer of Thorns this month by Margaret Rogerson. This is a standalone fantasy and it's said to be kind of like if you enjoyed the Hogwarts library 
like you really enjoyed this one and it's got like little grimoires and our main character our main perspective she has to kind of rescue or not rescue but kind of recover this grimoire that's kind of going to destroy the world if she doesn't get it back within the library but i feel like a lot of people are kind of torn between this they either really love it or really hate it but she's just got like a ton of really interesting standalones that i really want to get to the in the future she just had a new release kind of vespertine as well as an enchantment of ravens and they all sound really cool and almost have like a whimsical kind of fairy tale element that I just always love in books. So I'm hoping that that kind of delivers within here. And I will just really kind of enjoy this one so I can pick up those other ones as well in the future. But if you've read this and you did enjoy it, please let me know down below. And that other one is actually a reread. It's, it's just an absolute favorite of mine. And the third and final book is supposed to be coming out in August. But I'll be reading Fireborn in June and then... The second book, Flamefall, in July, and then I'll pick up the third and final book, which is called Fury Song by Rosaria Munda. And I'm actually kind of scared for the third book because in the second book, like it didn't it didn't go easy on like my favorite characters. And for a YA book, like I feel like it was pretty ruthless, especially as me kind of just reading all the happy books was just happy endings and everything. Like that one kind of really shocked me. And this first book, Fireborn, I just really fell in love with like the training, um, this Dragon Academy where they were kind of training to become kind of like the guardians of this um, this kingdom, this empire. And then how it was kind of like a little bit, just a very slim elements of kind of like the Russian Revolution, just mixed in with dragons. In the first book, you really just kind of sit with the characters and just learn about how their past affected them and where they are today and then the second book kind of like kicked up the stakes and led you to where the third and final book is going to kind of finish off so i'm hoping that it has a happy ending but i have a feeling that it's probably not going to and the last physical book that i'll be picking up this month is my grandmother asked me to tell you she's sorry by frederick bachman this was actually one that i had planned to read last month but with those other reads i just couldn't get to it and this, I honestly have no idea what's going on with it, but I've just enjoyed all of the other works that I've worked picked up by Frederick Bachman, so I have a feeling that this one will just be just as good as those other ones. Out of all the ones I've read so far, like, choosing a favorite is hard, because, like, I feel like they each tackle, like, very difficult topics, but in a very good way, and kind of just his writing style and humor that he kind of blends into it. Like, it just, you just give him his heart in the beginning and it'll either, he just pulls on the strings throughout the novel. Like, he'll make you cry, he'll make you laugh, and he just makes you think a lot. And I'm very excited to just finish off with the books that I have currently and then get to all the other books that I haven't yet. But this one, no idea what's going on and I don't need to know because I have a feeling that it'll just be a blast like all the other ones. As far as kind of audiobooks at all, it kind of depends on what my library kind of gives out to me because their loan system is a bit iffy and it will kind of say that it's my turn next and then the next time I look, like it's not my turn next and then it says like wait time six weeks. So it all kind of depends on what arrives so far. But the one that says that I'm next in line is The Black Joke by A.E. Rooks. And it is a nonfiction kind of talking about the ship that's kind of fighting the slave trade. So that's all I really need to know. It's a really topic that I've always wanted to learn more. So I'm excited to see how kind of like this nonfiction will go. I have a feeling that's just based on the reviews that I've seen before on the kind of library's website that it will kind of be a very great read to kind of pick up. And that other one is Globe by Catherine Arden and this is kind of detailing life within Shakespeare's London. It's just like the theater and how it kind of ran as well as kind of how it affected kind of like the community around it. So I've always been in wanting to kind of learn more about Shakespeare. We were only kind of required to read um, Romeo and Juliet in school and that's all I've read by Romeo, uh, by um, Shakespeare, so I, I have a feeling that this kind of nonfiction will kind of spark my interest to kind of pick more up from William Shakespeare in the future because he's got just like a huge backlist and he's one of kind of the greatest playwrights ever. So hopefully those come in from my library, I don't know, we'll see. I could check tomorrow and they say wait time, two months, so we'll just see how kind of those will go.
But those were all the books on this TBR. Hopefully I can get to all of them, but it'll all kind of depend on what I'm in the mood for. But I have a feeling that I've kind of got all these books kind of in the mood that I'm in right now. Like I've just been kind of on that grim dark fantasy kind of kick. So I have a feeling that most of these are gonna provide that. And I'm very excited to see if I do enjoy them as much as a lot of other people do. But that is gonna be all for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. And I look forward to seeing you in the next adventure. If you did enjoy, please consider liking and subscribing. But it's time for Ellie to come on here. And first wish you all to have a splendid day. But she also says that adventure is out there. So I'll catch you next time. Bye.